So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and try and put the Wi-Fi hacking speeds and thoughts to the grave one last time. So let's talk about, well, how good is your devices at hacking Wi-Fi? You know, we are being told all the time that devices as the Flipper Zero or the Wi-Fi Marauder, as you can see on my screen right now, are devices that can hack Wi-Fi networks and penetrate Wi-Fi networks and so on. Okay, so there's even more devices. You only also have stuff like the Ponagachi and so on. And what do they do and why does they do it? Now, let's just talk about that first of all. Now, devices like Ponagachi, they try and save an actual handshake for offline cracking. Um, the Wi-Fi Marauder or the Flipper Zero does the same thing basically you try and capture the wi-fi handshake and then you perform a dictionary attack or a simple hash lookup so <clears throat> you might ask how well protected is your wi-fi network and this is what i'm going to talk about right now so well you have your own Wi-Fi network access point right here. This is the beautiful one I draw on my screen. I know it's a pure Picasso. Okay, so what really happens here is that in, in the air, you know, signals are being broadcasted. And at some point, you know, some unit might, you know, capture those credentials. Well, that's the encrypted, of course, as a four-way handshake. And then basically, well, you can go ahead and offline crack it. Now, all this is true up until WPA2. WPA3, as the new standard in encryption, specifically says you need to interact with the Wi-Fi access point for every single guess, making it non-feasible to crack the password. Now, if you have the hash, might be able to look it up in some way, but we're going to talk about this right now. So assuming you have a hash, you want to crack it. We all know the old table that talks about five and six and eight characters are like more or less instantaneously cracked. And everything above that basically, you know, is a good idea, like seven, not seven, but eight plus characters, which is what the NIST standard actually, well, recommends for security. Okay, so I would say that is far too little. We need 20, 25, you know, how often do you actually type your Wi-Fi password and how protected is it really? Well, your password is protected exactly the same way as any other is. It is encrypted in the air by the encryption of your Wi-Fi access point. So when you capture that handshake, let me just write handshake right here, H is for handshake, and you actually wanna try and crack that. Well, basically, you can do that but it takes a lot of effort and time to do it. So if you want something successful from it, well, basically you probably want to make sure that the Wi-Fi password is easy to guess. So capturing that Wi-Fi credential in some way, still the prerequisite is it have to be WPA2 or before, it cannot be WPA3 because you cannot crack it that way. So the offline attack require you to have a intelligent uh, dictionary of words, AKA passwords, and then you can try them all and see if it fits. Now for many of the cafes, like the coffee cafes and other places and restaurants that do actually offer free Wi-Fi, such as hotels and so on, 
it's kind of in periods that they um, do enforce a longer, stronger password. And I know they say, but guests cannot remember it and so on, so on. But that's not really true, right? Even so that you gave it like a 24 in length password, which would be good in my eyes. Well, then um, people still going to type it. And even so you had a 10 digit password, people still going to complain just as much for 10 digits to 24 digits. They know the security is important. If you want to use the public Wi-Fi, you need to put in the password. But public is still public and that should be separated for the actual network. So public Wi-Fi talk is just another part of the whole idea of why Wi-Fi is a bad idea in general. But we are here and we still use it. So we're going to talk about it again with a focus on you use the flipper zero. You want to crack the password. So the actual flipper zero itself is a horrible unit for cracking passwords. Even though that it might introduce some software in some way that it can do it, it's just a bad idea. You won't get the speed from it. It will take a lot of time to just guess simple stuff that a normal computer can do in like a split second. So the Marauder, the Wi-Fi Marauder, again, the unit you can buy at Just Call Me Coco. Great units for showcasing how easy it is to create network. But for actual pen testing, you know, it's a um, misunderstood concept. It has nothing to do with pen testing. It has to do with testing human stupidity. And for that, I'm all in for using Flipper Zero or the Marauder or whatever you have as device. So going back to the uh, table, we're going to talk about this right here. Is that, you know, the NIST standard assuming that the eight character password recommendation and the link is right here, just from article I found, you know, because they constructed it. You can see that these different kind of hardware, you know, different kind of um, hardware um, graphic cards going to take different kind of time to crack these kind of, you know, uh, password. And even even now, you know, we see stuff like ChatGPT as a part of it. So, you know, eight characters just doesn't cut it anymore. So we're going to go ahead and down here and see like, okay, okay, okay. So now that we even mix it together and give them even more complexity, you know, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. But if you can make like a lookup uh, of the hash, and let's just say it's like something like a rainbow table, well, then basically, it doesn't really matter how many letters you have. If you have the password in your rainbow table, which is just a collection of hashes and clear text um, combinational letters that is the hash, well, then um, it's just an instant lookup. So if you can create a database of all the passwords within, let's just say, 30 letters long, all combination of characters and this is what your project is it's just one big lookup database basically you will have all passwords at your hand in clear text instantaneously if you got the hash it has no worth or whatsoever unless you have the hash it's very important. Everyone can have any combination of letters lying down in a notepad on the computer and state that someone is using that password somewhere in the world. It is worthless. What you need is the hash and also associated to that hash, where is it from? If you cannot answer that question and you don't know whether and you don't have no hash, it is worthless. So we still have rainbow tables. We still have to crack the password. And no matter how many flipper zero software groups you go through or Wi-Fi Marauder and so on, it will not help you to try and crack the hash. If you don't know where it's from, it's worthless to have the hash. It's just a hash. If you know where the hash is from and you do have a rainbow table that can instantaneously look it up, then you do have success and you have access 
So is that a bad thing? Is it bad security that someone have a password in a rainbow table? Of course not. We have no control of rainbow tables. Anyone can create a rainbow table. I could create an instantaneous lookup for any password within 10 characters using normal combinations of, let's say, like small and capitalized letters and numbers. I'll probably find at least 50% of all passwords on the earth just like that. Probably, just a guess. It could be more, it could be less. I don't really care. It's just an example of anyone could do that. So as a security professional, you just need to do better. You need to think, hmm, what really happens if they get access? Is that a bad thing? Is it the point to have access? How much access do they need? So you need to adhere to the security principles of zero trust. You need to adhere to the principle of assume breach. And you basically need to adhere to the principle of least privilege access. You need to have segmented, segmented your network. You need to have user access control. You need to have control of your confidentiality, integrity, and availability concepts. These kind of things is what is important for you if you want to define whether you have a secure Wi-Fi setup or not. So the question is, is devices like Flipper Zero and Wi-Fi Marauder good pen testing devices? They are as good as any other Wi-Fi capturing unit there is. Any normal computer with an alpha card, you can go ahead and buy it on Amazon with a full operating system of Linux using Aircrack as the most potent piece of software to crack and to capture Wi-Fi handshakes. It is just as good as that. What matters is, do you know where the Wi-Fi hash is from? That's the first question. And do you have the password in a list, either as a rainbow table lookup or as a dictionary attack? If you can say yes to both of those questions, it doesn't matter how you captured the hash. All that matters is now you have access. And that is the question that I want to answer in this video to bury down all the misinformation about how great a device Flipper Zero is for getting access for pen testing. It has nothing to do with getting access, nothing to do with pen testing. It is all about capturing handshakes. Basically, that's it. If you can trick people into connecting to an evil portal, it is a total different scenario. It has nothing to do with cracking a password. It has everything to do with a stupid user interacting with your device. So this is just one case that I, I actually talk about right now. It has nothing to do with evil portal or other kinds of software. This is just the pure capturing the handshake, then what can you do? So I hope you learned something from this video. I really hope you understand what I said. See you online and please make sure to be subscribed to the channel to get the future updates and see you out there and stay safe.